Hey, wonderful person. We're back here talking about narcissists again, and we're talk today we're going to talk about a type of person the narcissist tries to avoid, doesn't do well around, and also you make sure that the people in the narcissist's orbit are um, warned against. They kind of use their people uh, to wall off this person. So before we get into it, though, I have to thank everybody who has subscribed. Thank you very much. It means the world to me. It's making, uh, it's letting us get this word out to people. You know, one day I hope that, I know narcissism is getting to be a big topic, but it would be nice if everybody in the world knew about narcissism, like everybody, even the narcissist, and they were like, yeah, I have narcissism. I'm trying to work with it. Uh, sorry. Uh, this is... You know, what if we were at that point in the world, right? And by getting these kind of videos out, people are learning the roadmap, the blueprint of a narcissist and how they react, how they think, how they feel and why they feel that way. So that when they come in contact with a narcissist, they're more likely to do well against the narcissist and eventually leave the narcissist or or not even get into their entanglement, get entangled into their web of lies and, and deceits and trickery, right? So if you like this kind of video, please press like because it helps the channel out a lot. It helps gets the word out and subscribe. I thank you very much subscribers. It means the world to me and to this channel. So, and we're helping people. Uh, if I had a channel like this back in the old days, it would, God, my life would be so much different because I wouldn't have gotten involved with narcissists. I wouldn't have kept going back to the narcissist like I could fix them. You can't fix the narcissist. You can't fix the narcissist. A, a therapist could barely fix the narcissist. Um, yes, and uh, somebody asked me today what kind of medications fix the narcissist. They have a, a variety of medications now that can fix the narcissist. Well, fix the you know, help the narcissist get over their issues in life um, to help fix their situation and better the situation. And I've actually seen it work. And I know people are like, no, that's not going to happen. But <laughs> it can happen. It's rare. It's rare, but it can happen. So today we're going to discuss a kind of person that kind of dissolves away all of the crud that the narcissist uses to ensnare people and use people. A kind of person that is immune to all the tricks that the narcissist uses and a kind of person, honestly, that we all want to kind of be like. And that person, unfortunately, doesn't have a label. Yay! <laughs> so how do I describe this person? Uh, and you can see we look at our issues more than we look at our solutions. This person is the solution to so many things in life, this type of person. But narcissists, on the other hand, we have a label for them. We've, we used to have another label for them. Now we have narcissism, some call uh, narcissistic personality disorder. Some people call it, yeah, the abbreviation is NPD. So we have a label for it. But this, this person that the narcissist doesn't do well around is a, um, a well-grounded, um, self-centered in a good way with themselves and their heart and their boundaries and what they like and what they don't like. Now, usually when we say self-centered, what it really means is we're saying self-absorbed and they're kicking the world away. They don't want anything to do with the rest of the world. They're so self-absorbed in themselves. But it's good to be self-centered. This is where the center is. This is where your heart is. You know what's right. You know what's wrong. You know what your boundaries are. And you're sticking to them. And there's nothing, uh, nothing about that. And this type of person is like that. There is no... Uh, waffling on the issues as well uh, around what their boundaries are and what's acceptable and what's good and what's bad, you know, because the narcissist will always try and weaken those and argue those away. And this person isn't going to even put up with that then. Because once the argument starts, you know, part of the argument is to nibble away at your reasoning for having those boundaries in the first place. 
And this type of person doesn't even, they don't even play that. And, you know, if you got, if you go into a courtroom and you start asking the judge a lot of questions, that's taken as hostility. Questions are taken out as hostility. Why? Because you're trying to um, neg down, and it's a way of saying, cast shade on what is working, what is acceptable, and what is beneficial in that system. This narcissist does the same to you. Well, will try to, and this type of person doesn't fall for it. They are very ironclad on what their boundaries are. So this is the type of person, you know, it's not the type of person who has led a charmed life and they're just levitating on the clouds above us all and they've always been wealthy and successful and well put together and well-meaning. No, it's usually people who have been through the ringer, usually people who have seen narcissists and maybe lived with them and wasted years of their life with them. Uh, people who have known stuff, people have seen stuff that wasn't good. People have lived stuff that wasn't good. And so they have a kind of wisdom with them, but a wisdom that they stick with. But they have a wisdom that they stick with and hold dear to themselves. And because they hold dear to that wisdom and those boundaries, the narcissist can't play with them anymore. The narcissist can't bend their boundaries this way or that way because this well-centered, uh, holistic uh, individual, you know, and I say holistic because they know all the aspects of themselves. They're okay with their the flaws, but they're like, eh, you know, everybody's got flaws. I'll, I'll work with them. I'll better them. I'll, I'll try and get it so that they're not um, holding me back. And, and and then when they they and they see their good points, but they're not like, oh man, they, these good points make me so much better than everybody else. Everybody else is dirt because I'm good at this. They don't they don't go there, <laughs> right? They're kind of in the middle. And they stay in the middle and they love being in the middle of of like well-adjusted heart-centered person there's no label for it unfortunately so the description you're going to have to do and this person is usually in their 40s and 50s and 60s because after you've seen life right after you had your behind handed up on a silver platter a few times you learn a few things and one of the things you learn is that it's 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 about being in here and not being out there. The other people's opinion really doesn't matter that much. All right? Uh, like if a, a this well-adjusted person goes to a party and they don't like the party. So let's say they're a health nut and they're into smoothies and walks and all this stuff and then they go to a party and it's just about drinking and getting drunk and there's a few people in the back um, smoking all kinds of different things they're like you know this isn't going to hurt me personally but this is not what i do uh, and the thing is is that you can't weaken your boundaries you can't play with your boundaries you have to know what you're good at and what you're not good at what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. And you're just never going to do it. And it's not a matter of, um, you know, bending these boundaries that you have. And it's not a matter of being like, oh, I don't do this. You know, I'm going to be a rule Nazi and I'm never going to do that. You know, it's, they're just comfortable. They just know who they are and they know where their lane is. And they will extricate themselves from that party. They'll go to the host and say, uh, you know, this was this is a wonderful party. Give a few compliments here, a few compliments there. The food over there was fantastic. I don't know where you got that, but I can't stay. I have to go, you know, and have some excuses on why they can't, why they have to go, but they're going to do it anyway. The, what they are and who they are is not wrapped up in what other people think. Of them and for the narcissist that's a lot of what and who they are right what other people think of them 
Uh, they're all about what you think of them. That's why they are, they'll, they'll come to you and say, hey man, do, do you like my shirt? This, this shirt, you know, I got this shirt on sale. Look at how good it is. You know, it's from Italy. Look at, look at the, <laughs> and you weren't even talking about that, right? <laughs> well, this guy, this well-adjusted type of person will say, oh, well, hold it now. Joe was just talking about this new place he just um, rented. And he said the flooring was fantastic. Go ahead, Joe, uh, finish that story, right? And the narcissist is like, what? Uh, my job is to bring all eyes on me, turn all roads of the universe to me. And this guy, who, did, who the hell does he think he is? He's, he's, he's in control of the conversation. He's gonna control this party and control all our thoughts. Who the hell does he think he is? Now, <laughs> the narcissists, they're doing the same thing. This is their life, right? They will complain in their own head, in their own head, <laughs> about kind of what they are. They don't like what they are. So, you know, that's another thing, too. If you strip away all the narcissists' BS and gaslighting and and show them what they are every day. They are, and they 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 default back to shame, drastic shame. But anyway, I go off on a, on a tangent there. A lot of the edits that I have in these videos <laughs> are me going way off topic. I have had uh, here's another off topic situation. You know, people ask the, you know, what kind of experience have you had with narcissists? Well, first and foremost, um, I had a narcissistic mom for 56 years. So, and she wasn't too distant. So I have had a lot of experience and her father was narcissistic too. And they're both narcissistic in a different way, but they have very similar patterns of behaviors, of things they don't like and things they don't tolerate. I brought that up to um, both of them and they didn't like that either. <laughs> they didn't like me too much uh, bringing up. The narcissist does not like the person that can see right through them in any respect. Even if you just saw a sliver right through them. Not the whole thing, just a sliver. Oh, they don't like it at all. But now like back to this person, this well-adjusted, self-centered, heart-centered person with firm boundaries. They don't like that person because that person, they don't have any effect on that person. That person, they can't manipulate that person in any way, right? Um, first, when meeting a person like that, right, the narcissist isn't going to throw a full-on temper tantrum and rage. They got to step it up little by little. Anybody that's been in a relationship with a narcissist knows that in the beginning it was all fun and games and they put on this big act about how they were a great person and they were a fun person to be around and blah 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 it was all show and then but they they step up the um the abuse little by little right first they cut into conversations and just bring it back to them for no reason at all that's the first maybe one of the first steps and then they step it up and then they step it up and then they step it up and they dial it back a little bit to see where you're at. And, they, and then they step it up even more and more, right? And maybe they'll have a heated argument that's, or they will just flip out because you criticized something or you had your own opinion. God forbid you should have your own opinion. And then they'll apologize for it. And then they'll do it again two days later. And then they won't apologize for it. See, that's a step up. That's a level up. They're bringing you in. So... Oh, my camera almost uh, went out on me. So it's been said that you can, and I don't know why you'd want to do this, you can boil a frog <laughs> and the frog won't jump out of the pot if you turn the water up very slow, uh, turn the temperature up very, very slowly. And the narcissist does the same thing. You won't jump out of that pot of narcissism if they turn it up very slowly, little increments. And so this type of person, this well-centered, uh, heart-centered, firm boundaries type of person, 
is going to come into their world, and a narcissist is going to throw in these little, little hooks, I think of them as, right? Like fishing hooks. They just throw it out there. And if you take the bait, they reel you in a little bit, and then, you know, they reel you in more and more and more. Uh, well, this type of person is totally immune to that, right? They just, because their center is here. It's not out there. They really don't care terribly what other people think. They care more about that they did the right thing and that they didn't do wrong things to themselves. They didn't let other people abuse them and they didn't stand by while other people were abused. Right? They have a strong sense of morality, but it's not like a Nazi sense of morality, right? <laughs> Where it's all forceful and almost abusive or actually abusive. Um, and I want to say, right, that they don't care what other people think. In a, in a way they do, in a way they mostly don't because they say, I have to leave this party and I really don't care what they think but they do care what they think, right? Um, they apologize profusely, they, uh, not too profusely. They're gonna leave anyway, one way or another, because they have solid boundaries. And what the narcissist is looking for, they're not looking for that kind of a person, they're looking for a person who's willing to chip away at their own boundaries, to say, you know, I don't really wanna leave this party. I, you know, they, they invited us to this party and they didn't have to do that. Maybe we should just stick it out a little bit longer. Uh, I don't want them to think badly of me. And then, you know, somebody will come by and say, hey man, you want to smoke this? And like, you've never smoked anything in your life. You don't know what it's going to do to you, but you feel like maybe you should. Uh, I don't want them to think badly of me. Maybe I'll just take a few puffs. Who knows where that's going to lead? To the hospital? I don't know. We don't know. These are the type of people that the narcissist likes because the narcissist can do what they're doing. Peer pressure, all kinds of games, right? It, all kinds of games. I'll do another uh, video on all the games and all the hooks and tricks that the narcissist uses to get its hooks into people. The hooks are not just fishing lines, they're puppet lines. So once they get those hooks working, they can puppet you and you'll dance to their tune. So this is what the narcissist is going to do, right? We've already gone over what the narcissist thinks this, uh, that this person, right, initially. This, how dare this person try and take over the conversation? Narcissist tried to take over the conversation already. And pr we'll probably try a couple more times. I'm getting over here so the light doesn't get into the camera. <laughs> So a couple more times uh, to see if maybe that was a mistake. Maybe the guy was just, you know, maybe this is just circumstances. If I could try a couple more times, what about my hair? How did my hair look, everybody? Oh, I got these new glasses, right? And whatever. And the guy would be like, uh, well, we should, let's let him finish talking about the flooring in his apartment, even though it's boring, right? Even though it's boring to everybody else. He started, he should be allowed to finish his conversation. This person, well-centered person, has a strong set of moralities, a strong sense of boundaries. He's not gonna let somebody else just be mowed over by this other person that wants to bring everything back to himself. So the narcissist in this situation is gonna be upset and is also going to try and distance themselves from the narcissist. I'm everybody in this story. <laughs> They're going to try and distance themselves from this heart-centered, well-meaning, great boundaries type of person. They're going to try and distance themselves personally from this person. And they're going to try and wall this person off using the people in their orbit, everybody else. They're going to they're going to go to another conversation and talk crap about this person. Say, oh, wow, that guy over there. Um, yeah, what's his deal? He, what, what's his problem? And they'll be like, well, what do you mean? He's, uh, you know, whatever. And that's, oh, he's, he's so stuck up. He's so, you know, and they're like, well, you know, they'll, they'll try and talk crud, low-level crud about this person. 
um, to try and trash that person to everybody in their orbit to kind of create a wall of people that dislike this person, the well-centered, well-grounded person between the narcissist, before the narcissist. So the narcissist is protected sort of by these other people between them and this person that can dissolve all their BS all their BS because nothing sticks to this person. It's not that even they like, like um, Superman, like it bounces off. It doesn't even bounce off. It doesn't even touch them. It just goes right through them. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, and the narcissist knows this, these types. The narcissist has been around the block. He knows these types. He knows this type of person. He knows that, oh boy, that's a reflection. <laughs> he knows what the deal is and he recognizes this kind of person and he doesn't want anything to do with it because this person can illuminate all their tricks and dissolve all the tricks and all the hooks that they have in um, anybody else right so this person could say oh no 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 don't do that do, don't don't do that and a narcissist is like hey wait wait a second that's my servant i told that servant to do that you know in one way or another i didn't tell him directly but I, i'm getting them to do it because i shamed them into it don't you tell them not to do it because it's good for them it's, the narcissist doesn't want this type of person around that's part of the reason why the narcissist doesn't want this person around and because the, also, the narcissist doesn't really understand this type of person. The narcissist sees everybody as trying to outmaneuver them, out to get them. They'll, a lot of times they'll say it. Everybody's out to get everybody else, or everybody's trying to achieve a power standing in something. Narcissists see a love relationship as a power relationship. Who has more power? in the love relationship. It's about power who and who has the most, which is really bizarre, especially if it's about love. It's not about, you know, outmaneuvering somebody like we're on a battlefield. But that's why it's a personality disorder. And one of the key aspects with this person that I forgot to mention is that these well-centered people, heart-centered, self-centered people, in a good way, <laughs> uh, don't take a lot of things personally. They don't personalize everything. Narcissists like to personalize everything, right? If you do something wrong, you're wrong. It's not that your habits were wrong or you weren't raised right and you just have to learn a different way of doing things in order to get things to... No, 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 no. Not in a narcissist world. You are broken and deserve to be punished, usually by the narcissist. But... The well-centered person is like, no, 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 don't, don't worry. You'll get the hang of it. You'll learn the hang of it. It's just a habit, just like everything else. You'll get, or it's just a learning curve and you'll get the hang of it. They don't personalize everything. And when a narcissist uses, you know, threats or language or um, name calling, that, that's a, uh, or lies, the narcissist will lie about this person and say they didn't do something that they actually did and maybe get try and get them trouble at work, make them look like a fool and a liar in front of the managers or whatever. This well-centered person doesn't take that personally. Uh, yes, I know. A lot of people, uh, I could feel other people on the other side of the screen screaming, what, what, that's so wrong, that's so wrong. There are so many so wrong stories behind narcissism. Everybody that's known a narcissist knows that there are so many. And you, you'll see stories pop up in the comments. They're like, oh my God, they did that to you? Really? And it's all that and a lot more and a lot worse. I digress. I digress. He doesn't take it personally, <laughs> right? He's like, you know, this person is damaged. Um, I'll outmaneuver this person because I have a great work ethic. I, I do tell the truth and the truth will out because I tell the truth and I show them the truth. And I could go out of my way to show them that what they're talking about, what they're thinking of me is not correct without attacking this person, without being vengeful, vengeful to this person, <laughs> right? And that's what the narcissist 
didn't expect. The narcissist is, is attacking you to get you to respond in kind or worse so that they can play the victim now and say, oh, look at this person attacking me out of nowhere. I had no idea. I'm just innocent sitting here and this crazy person is attacking me. Oh boy, they have a real bee in their bonnet today. I hope they get it together, right? <laughs> that's what the narcissist, that's narcissism 101. But this type of person doesn't do that because they didn't take it personally. So they don't take any of the bait, any of the big bait that the narcissist throws out. They can't get their hooks into them. And it's, an, it's, a, it's a fantastic trait to have because they don't get over-personalized with themselves as well, right? Their uh, successes, uh, the things they do well and the things they do terribly, they don't get overly um, into those things. They don't, it's not, doesn't, it, because they don't do well in something, it doesn't mean that they are a flaw. And because they do extremely well and they're extremely successful in something, doesn't mean that they're better than all the rest of us. It's just a habit that they picked up somewhere along the way. If it's a successful habit, like making money, they're very happy and very grateful that they have that. And if it's a bad habit, they might want to change that and they, they'll probably admit that they want to change that too, but it doesn't mean that they are degraded by it. That's this type of person. And that's why it's very difficult for the narcissist to get their hooks into. When we see, when we hear about a person like this, well, of course we don't want any narcissists in our lives, but this is also a great way to be and a great kind of person to be. And we want to become this kind of person that's almost immune to, well, first of all, to narcissists, but you know, it's not just narcissists. There's a lot of people in society that pick up narcissistic traits that are not narcissists. Maybe because they've never seen any healthy traits or just because it just seems so powerful they picked it up on their own. Or more likely they've been raised by narcissists but they haven't become narcissists themselves. And so now they have this big toolbox of narcissistic tools in it that they use to get what they want honestly because they don't really know any better so these situation these type of people will uh, be immune to all that because there are a whole lot of people out there in the world that act like this or they they don't usually have narcissistic like traits until something goes gets really stressful right they uh, and then they act poorly under the stress um, and being this well-grounded, nice boundaried person is just the holy grail we all strive for. I know I'm striving for it. It doesn't always work. I'm in a career where people have narcissistic traits and there are narcissists. So I'm trying to be, it makes me, if it helps me be a better person because it keeps saying that. If you become this, this heart-centered, well-centered, self-centered in a good way, firm boundary person, then nothing basically can touch you. I mean, you're, uh, and, and your own flaws, your own, right, you, the, the problems of life basically can't touch you because this type of a person is like, well, yeah, I may be going through bankruptcy. Yeah, and I'm going through divorce. Yeah, and I have this terrible disease. Yeah, but that's all life. That's all life. I'll get past it some way. I'll figure some way past it. Everybody, you know, the people have done this a million times over. I'm not that unique. Uh, I'll get on with it. Right? I don't know if I could deal with all that stuff at once. <laughs> so, yeah, we all want to kind of be that type of person. And it, it's, a, it's a work in progress. Like I said, uh, usually these people are 40 plus because they have had stuff to work on and usually because they had to work on it not because they went to a monastery and meditated eight hours a day it's because <laughs> because life was tough life was hard they worked their way through it they grew they wanted to grow and now they are through with the narcissist or whatever crap terrible situation that they were in usually because yeah, if you ask these people what they've been through, sometimes it just is there are horror stories behind it. 
and they are so chill and zen about it because they've seen it. They've come through hell, and here they are. They're still standing there. So they're like, this isn't the worst thing ever. You know, those three terrible situations that, um, you know, some people live out of their cars. They're homeless, living out of their cars. They're like, oh, my goodness, I couldn't do that. I could never do And they do that, and they're like, oh, it's temporary. You know, it happens. <laughs> they don't personalize hardly anything. So... Yeah, it's a great way to live. It's a great kind of person to strive to be. And yes, it is the person that the narcissist definitely doesn't like and tries to wall themselves off against. But, ah, uh, yes. I'm not there yet. <laughs> but I'm getting there. I am getting there. And I see uh, when a narcissistic tendency people try and test me, I either succeed or I fail, right? And I've been succeeding a lot lately because I've been learning. And it's not about just learning here. It's about when the knowledge goes here. You know, the ancients used to say, and this confused the heck out of people, and it used to confuse the heck out of me. And they said it again and again, like Roman times and stuff, that knowledge, that the seed of knowledge was not here. It was here. And we're like, oh, please, we've been to the moon, man. And we know brains and we know it's all here. Now I know what they're talking about. It, it's here because here it's intellectual it's just a concept that can be constructed or deconstructed but when it's here when you know it through and through without a doubt it's in your heart you feel it here and when your boundaries are here and when your heart is here and your heart is in it in, in your life you're almost indestructible, especially to narcissists. Okay, people, I hope this helped. Have a great day, and let's get on with our great lives.